Okay, so this is God working on this planet. But there's going to be blowback, and we know it. And the best they got in their wild-eyed desperation is what happened on Paris, November 13, 2015. These people are insane psychopaths, and they're going to hell on a rocket. And anybody that supports ISIS at that sports game, you think God approves of this? You got another thing coming. The soul of God hates those that love violence. You remember that. And yes, I am always proponing. I'm a proponent of loving our enemies and doing everything that Jesus said to do. This is the master. He supersedes all the laws and all the prophets in the wisdom of his teaching. And he said, you must do this thing because this is what God does. God holds his hand out to the bitter end. Stop it. Turn to me. Let your soul, let your conscience be convicted. Come to me. I am able to save to the uttermost. I don't delight in the destruction of the wicked. I wish none to perish, but all to come to repentance. Yes, and I care. That's the love I have for humanity. I have learned from him, and I offer to humanity. But I can tell you this much. I will commit whatever I need to. I will defend the weak, the vulnerable, the innocent out there. I will do whatever is necessary. I will be a soldier in the name of righteousness. I would do that, but only that. And I will, I will disregard and I will defy, just like Thomas said, Jefferson said to do, that the highest form of patriotism is sometimes just uh, not going along with it, okay? not going along with the tyranny. That's it. And that's the highest form of friendship that you can offer another human being. It's saying, look, you are desperately wrong. Okay, woefully wrong in this respect. You're not seeing the forest for the tree. If you're real and you're passionate, you really believe this, it's no different than being demon-possessed. Okay? Because you've got to say no. You've got to dissent. This is, the, this is what you need to do. You've got to expose the system. ISIS, all you people, any sympathizers out there, I say get it off your chest, man. And if you're living in America, get it off your chest. I understand right here in the little town of Chico, we've got uh, a fellow that uh, is a, a refugee from, from Syria, and he's blaming uh, Assad. He thinks it was Assad that... Uh, that uh, was causing violence on his people through the chemical attacks and this. And we all know now that this was a false flag. This was a frame-up against Assad. So this guy, if I meet him, I'm going to have to straighten him out on that fact. Because I don't need any ISIS sympathizers around me. Okay? And I need to tell them the way it is. That who you're working for. And they betrayed you. Yes, they stabbed you in the back because they chickened out. They lied to you. They set you up and they got you cornered like rats in Syria and that surrounding region. So you can get as mad as you want and throw tantrums and kill innocent people, but you're not going to win the hearts and minds of the majority of decent human beings that have half a grain of intelligence left. Okay? They're not going to buy it any more than they bought Hitler's reign of terror. They're not going for it. Okay, because it's no different. Killing innocent people is killing innocent people. doesn't matter what labels you put on them. Jews, Seventh-day Adventists, gypsies, poor people, Christians, Americans. Oh, they're decadent people. They deserve to die. What do you think? You're not sinners walking around with that kind of hate in your hearts? Oh, my God. You are such lost causes unless you repent, man. Get on your faces. Cry out to God to change your evil hearts. That's my advice to you. And if you're living in America... Say what you got to say, man. Say it in whatever vein you got to say it. Say it with all the gusto and passion you can muster up. But get it off your chest. And if you're really, really angry about something, spit it out. Because what's going on here is we've got the banking, the money industry, the moneyed ones are financing the wars. It's always in their interest to support chaos. Remember what Eisenhower taught. He said it's a business, it's an industry, the military industry. And that doesn't mean we don't have a whole lot of white hats in there that are very much opposed to running it like an industry. The same with law enforcement. They say, you know what, especially take the highway patrol. You think those guys, if it meant they were out of a job and there was no more traffic fatalities and injuries out on the highways, I think most of those guys would say, I'd be happy, I'll take another job. And it's the same way with a lot of the guys in our military. 
A lot of the men and women are our military, are valiant, decent, upright people, white hats. Same goes for law enforcement. Okay, and if they, they don't want, they don't care at any cost. They say, you know what? No, I want peace on earth. No, I want highway safety. So you understand that there is a lot of decent people. But it is a conflict of interest to solve the debt problem. If everybody was prosperous, there's no way they can indebt the individual nation or state. If everybody was prosperous, there'd be no poverty, in which case we wouldn't need a social welfare system, Cloward and Piven, okay? If there was no, if there was full prosperity, we wouldn't uh, have uh, the crime that's, that's, that's being induced through financial desperation. If there was full prosperity, we, these people wouldn't be able to get away with the dubious wars they incite. Okay? That's the reality. It would solve our problem. It would be a means to an end to freeing the people to actually having a reality that is consistent with the reality that our parents, God Almighty, the Most High, uh, okay, this, the reality that this God wants for us. And remember, this God is logical all the time, not some of the time. And so, whatever rationale you, you conclude, you know, that you're think whatever you conclude you're thinking with here, you've got to understand fundamentally that's got to be consistent with that. It's got to be looking at it through the eyes of a very good parent and what their will is for their children. Does a very good parent not want their children prosperous because of what Victor Hugo said? No, he said, well, wait a minute. If it's a ubiquitous reality and there's no, there's no extravagance here because everybody is prosperous, so... There's no differentiation here. We're all the same. We're all equally prosperous and rich, bountiful. We all have a, an immense sense of safety and security and freedom and liberty. So it's not a special exclusive privilege anymore. It's everywhere. Our entire reality is different. So yes, God is like a set of very good parents that wants the very best for not some of his kids, but all of the kids, okay? And that's what we have to do. Each of us individually have to go out there and act like a parent to everybody else. And if you call yourself somebody's friend, then you have a responsibility, you have a duty, you have an obligation to correct them when they're wrong, okay? You need to point that out to them and help them to see where their thinking went wrong. It's just like trying to explain a long mathematical problem. A teacher that knows more than the student has to go through and pick out exactly where they screwed up because the student otherwise, he's sure in his mind he did everything right. He doesn't see where he's thinking got askew. But it's very important that we've got to help each other. This is what a friend does. Okay, your enemy will let you fall into a pit. Your enemy will say, yes, I know better, but I've got this ulterior motive because you're my boss, you're my employer, you're my master, I need you, you're above me. Whatever reason, we defer being true to ourselves by correcting people, by dissenting from agreement, okay? That is a form of correction. And then if they think that we're wrong, then let them point that out as best they can. But sometimes, like in math and science, I pointed out before, there's only one right answer. In math particularly, there's always only one right answer. In science sometimes, because there's so much exploration and research that we can debate different things, the string theory or, you know, whatever, is, whatever the latest thing is out there in science, but there are certain things that are settled. We know, for instance, basic fundamental truths about science. We know how gravity works. We don't understand it completely, but we definitely know it has a powerful effect. The same with magnetism. The same with our atmosphere. Everything out there. The fact that the solar system works like a fine Swiss watch in its accuracy. So that's how it is, folks, with ethics and moral boundaries that sometimes right is always right, it's never wrong. Truth is always truth. Okay, and we have to say, you know what? That there's only one way that we can learn to live with each other and get along in peace and harmony and contentment as a family. 
And that's by ad adhering to the precepts that are given to us daily. Daily. We have a chance to grow as human beings. To become more and more on the right track. And have more and more resolve that we know that we have true wisdom. We know we have true learning and understanding and knowledge about this thing. We know that we are going to be found worthy and deserving of obtaining a better world when we leave this place. And that we're fighting the good fight here on earth and eventually this earth will be reclaimed by the good forces, the white hats. Those that are on the side of God and good. All that is good. And eventually this thing will turn around. And then we're going to live in that world filled with prosperity, filled with security, filled with freedom, and it doesn't have anything to do with money whatsoever. And it works just fine. So I'm going to wrap up this video today, and I hope everybody out there is doing good and has a great day. And it's not easy. Keep heart. Keep the faith. Turn to God every day for advice, counseling, and, uh, you know, give glory to God. Praise God. When you're feeling